Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Great Men Taking Over the World. I'm Red, and today I'm talking about a forgotten hack and slash for the PS1, a game that highly resembles the Animusha games from the PS2 era. So, was it an influence? Is it a spiritual predecessor to those games? Is this game even good, especially now in 2022? Let's find out, shall we? Today, I'm talking about Soul of the Samurai! Soul of the Samurai, also known as Ronin Blade in Europe, is a hack and slash action adventure game developed and published by Konami in 1999 for the original Sony PlayStation. I never played it back in the day, but I knew about it from seeing ads in gaming magazines. I always wanted to try it after I played and became obsessed with the original Tenchu game, which was an evocative experience for me as an 11 year old kid back in the late 90s. Tenchu got me fascinated with feudal Japan, samurai, ninjas, and everything in that realm. It got me into old school films like Seven Samurai, Yojimbo. Harakiri, and many other classics. I was just a kid, yet I loved watching these old ass black and white movies. It was great. Back then, my brother and I even created homemade ninja and samurai movies inspired by all these films, and especially inspired by my passion for Tenchu. So of course Soul of the Samurai looked like it was right up my alley. I didn't know much about it except that it had samurai in it and took place in feudal Japan, which was surely enough for me at the time as you can tell. Simply put, it reminded me of Tenchu, but I never saw it in rental stores or anything and I never bought it either, so unfortunately I never got to try it. It just kinda got lost in time for me. I totally forgot about it until I was looking up games to add to my PS1 Mini, which got me super excited to check it out. To finally visit a game I really wanted to play more than 20 years ago as a kid. Wow, this is so cool and interesting. So here we are. Does the soul still burn brightly in this forgotten hack and slash samurai game? Or is it just a dull rusty sword to be sheathed for eternity? Let's slice this one right open and find out. You play as two characters, either the Ronin, or masterless samurai if you will, named Kotaro, or the Kunoichi female ninja named Lin. The story is split between the two depending on who you pick. You see both characters' side and what they've been up to before they cross paths a few times over the course of the game. Kotaro travels to his hometown to pay respects to his parents' graves as well as to visit his old training friend. On his way, he encounters a girl, Lin, who's surrounded by bloodthirsty lawmen and intervenes to help her. He also never misses the chance to hit on her as well. <laughs> He finds that the lawmen all over town are super violent and aggressive, ready to attack as if possessed or something, and through his visit to the temple graveyard he starts to discover the mystery of it all. There is definitely an evil lurking afoot. Almost like a resident evil if you catch my drift. <laughs> Lin, who reminds me of Ayami from Tenchu and also Taki from Soul Calibur, or should I say Soul Edge since that was before Soul Calibur and before this game as well. She's looking for her older brother, Chris. Whoops, wrong franchise. She's looking for her brother, Shin, who's also a ninja. He went missing during his mission to investigate the disappearance of a ship carrying the Shogun's gold. Like I said earlier, her path intertwines with Kotaro as they both unravel the mystery of strange occurrences in this particular fiefdom. The story's actually better than I thought it would be and kept me intrigued, wanting to see what happens next. I look forward to the cutscenes, especially as you find out more about what the hell's going on in this place. The dialogue was done well enough, exhibiting characters' personalities like Kotaro with his cool, carefree, laid-back attitude, and a bit of a horndog nature, which I can relate to myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no voice acting, which is understandable in something like an RPG where there's a ton of dialogue, but in a PS1 action game like this, come on, there should have been voice acting. This kinda looks cheap. Eh, oh well. In terms of gameplay, the first thing I thought of when I fired this up was, dude, this is Animusha. Animusha is basically an action-focused Resident Evil style game in feudal Japan with Samurai, much like Soul of the Samurai but came out on the PS2 a few years later. I mean hell, Soul of the Samurai has the fixed pre-rendered camera angles like Resident Evil, which Animusha also did, and it's in feudal Japan with sword fighting as well. I know this isn't made by Capcom, but it feels like a predecessor to Animusha. Soul of the Samurai definitely copied Resident Evil, and so did Animusha, but Animusha was made by Capcom, the company who did both, so it could be seen as just a natural deviation of that gameplay style. Not sure if Soul of the Samurai inspired Animusha directly or not, cause it's kind of a lesser known game, but it sure looks like it from what I see here, and it's just interesting to notice. Hmm. 
So yeah, you go from area to area, hacking and slashing dudes with your sword. It's usually one to three guys per area, and for the most part, you can't run past them. In most cases, the areas get locked off until you clear the baddies, and there's usually a boss at the end of the level. Sometimes you have to find key items to unlock doors or passageways. You find herbs as healing items, just like Resident Evil. So clearly, there's a lot of influence from that series here. You can save your progress at the flowers, but no ink ribbons required at least. <laughs> Combat is totally different from Resident Evil though. Since it's close range combat, well, except for the projectiles Lin uses, it plays more like a fighting game, and for the most part, it only takes a few hits to kill the basic enemies, which reminded me of Bushido Blade, a cool PS1 weapons based fighting game that came out a few years before. It's kind of cool in this way, because it feels more realistic in that sense where it's just a few slashes to kill your opponent, like a real samurai duel. There's a few different moves you can do depending on the direction you're pressing on the movement controls with the attack button, but just mashing the basic attack usually gets the job done, at least in the beginning. Blocking is imperative, otherwise you'll be turned into samurai sushi real quick. The enemies will block, so you'll have to go back and forth defending and attacking. You can also parry their attacks which will open them up so you can finish them off. It can be fun. This back and forth blocking, parrying and attacking reminded me of Sekido Shadows Die Twice. It's also useful to use the block button as a way to face and lock onto your opponent, otherwise you can miss your attacks easily, especially when you get surrounded and shit gets clunky and confusing. Holding the block button to readjust to the nearest enemy is vital in later stages, as well as bringing your A game in general. You can sidestep and dodge enemy attacks, which will be quite useful useful to move around in combat because any other kind of movement like turning or running around feels slow and awful and just opens you up to get hit. You can do a special parry move which I absolutely love. If you time your parry just right, the background will black out, the camera will swoop and zoom into your character doing a few quick slashes of cold steel as crimson blood splatters and bodies hit the floor. It's quite satisfying and pretty epic looking as you pull this off in the thick of combat. You get experience points when you kill enemies which in turn gains you new special moves when you level up. You also have an MP meter which depletes when you use those special moves and refills as you kill enemies as well. Don't kill the innocent villagers, it depletes your MP. Yes I tried and yeah I know you will too anyway. Special moves require particular button prompts that you can see on the pause menu and vary on their consumption of MP. Some weren't super useful or they were but in very specific moments. Others are great and help dispatch goons when you're surrounded. Like the parry move, these look awesome and flashy. They definitely spice up the fights. You also get different swords as you progress. They'll usually be stronger, or they'll have some sort of magic abilities like burning or electrocuting enemies. Some will be shorter and therefore faster, which I found quite useful. Not the lack of range part, but definitely the speed. You can definitely have some fun with the combat here. There are some cool moves, bits of variety, some depth, flashiness and all that, but there's still some serious clunkiness to it all. Movement feels awkward as hell. Locking onto opponents can be tricky, particularly when there are multiple foes around. Sword swipes feel slow and delayed. It's so annoying that you can't hit enemies when they fall down. You just have to stand there like a jackass waiting for them to come back up so their hitboxes can register again. Is the reason you can't hit them when they're on the ground for honor or for bullshit? I'll let you decide, but what I know is it's annoying and slows the combat down. At least Animusha alleviated that problem. Like Resident Evil, there can be some trickiness in regards to enemies and the camera angles. Sometimes guys are right there waiting to hit you immediately when you transition to a new area. What the hell? But to be fair, most of the time bad guys are stupid. They just run up and stand there like blockheads. <laughs> Here's another fun camera scenario. So I'm fighting this guy and pushing him towards where the camera angle will change into the next one, and he disappears when it transitions over. Then he appears behind me and I go back after him towards the other camera angle I just came from, and the same damn thing happens. What the hell, is he a ghost or something? Mm, looks like a zombie to me. I don't know man, that's just some funky clunky shit right there. Oh well, good for a laugh though I guess, right? Doing some special moves like having to press square a bunch of times is kind of annoying because you have to spam square, which are your regular attacks to do it, but that leaves you open to either being blocked or attacked if you can't do it in time. And by then you've been spamming the attack button so much you might have already done enough damage to kill them that the special attack can be useless because it's at the end of your regular attack combo and they might already be dead by then. Why not just make it quicker to get to? What the hell? 
Sometimes I do it by accident too, just when trying to kill a mofo real quick. While it's cool that Lin has a lot of different projectiles and bombs and shit, it's really easy to miss because you can't really lock on and it takes her forever to throw shit leaving her vulnerable. Like I really struggled with her on some of these low to the ground enemies. Not just her projectiles, but even her normal attacks wouldn't always register either. It's very annoying. You really notice the clunky controls, either when surrounded by multiple enemies or during boss fights. Especially large bosses like this giant ass monk dude that takes up a lot of space in the arena. I fucking hated this asshole. He kept running around fast as hell, jumping and body slamming me like it's a goddamn WWE wrestling match. Holy shit this dude kicked my ass. I died so fast so many fucking times, what the hell is this? Sekido before Sekido? I was getting super frustrated at this part and was almost ready to throw in the towel cause this game was already not super duper enjoyable as it was. But with perseverance, or should I say pure masochism, and the help of safe states, I was finally able to send Big Boy back to the depths of hell. But tonight, we died in hell! When you die, it's old school, so you have to watch your death animation over and over and over and over again, and then you're sent back to see all the logos, the intro, and then get back to the title screen and have to reload your save point and yada 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 yeah. So because of this nonsense, I would create a save state using the emulation program where I would save at in-game checkpoints so I could just reload the fucking thing back to the safe spot right after I died and avoid all the intros and menus and shit. I did this because otherwise I just wouldn't keep playing this game, particularly during that giant ass monk boss fight. I just don't have the patience for this type of tedious shit anymore. Honestly, I can do this type of shit in hard games that are awesome, you know, like the Souls game, Sekiro, and stuff like that. You know, you die a bunch there, but for some reason it never bothered me in those games. Not clunky games like this that I'm already not super crazy about to begin with anyway. No way. I can't stand that about these old games, man. Just give me an option to retry after death, or load a save checkpoint right then and there. Why do I have to do all that crap in between? Ugh, oh, sheesh. If you look past some of these annoying weak points, you can still have some fun here for sure. My favorite part was a particular samurai boss duel in a dojo. The swordplay combat was actually able to shine here. There was only one guy with a similar skill set to focus on. Lots of dodges, blocks, and parries were happening on both ends. It felt like a dance of death, a true epic samurai duel. That was easily my favorite part of the game. I just wish there were more moments like that. The graphics are pretty good. The character models are bright, colorful, and distinct. The backgrounds have some pretty cool camera angles. They are detailed and create a solid representation of feudal Japan atmosphere, ranging from town streets filled with people, to lush forests, serene temples, mysterious caves, and a large fortified castle. The sword fighting animations are cool, particularly when you do super moves and special parries. It's super cinematic, stylish, and flashy. I love it. No complaints about the graphics or presentation in this game whatsoever. The FMV intro, very much like PS1 intros of the time, is pretty badass and gets you hyped up. The music in this intro, although somewhat generic, is still banging and reminds me of a Tekken game or something. The soundtrack in general is great. I love Tenchu's soundtrack way more of course, but there's quite a contrast in comparison here. We got upbeat tempos, crazy jams that sound groovy, hip, and funky with a cool fusion of traditional Japanese instruments and modern electronic sounds rocking guitars, bass, and percussion. It's like the cool and hip brother to Tenchu's more dark, graceful, and serious vibe. This totally has its own identity and atmosphere in regards to a PS1 feudal Japan action game, and I'm all for it. It'll keep you pumped and jazzed up throughout. It may Made me want to keep playing just to hear some more awesome beats. Hell yeah! The soundtrack is one of the best aspects of the game, hands down. So I'm gonna give Soul of the Samurai a 6.5 out of 10. It's a pretty decent game, but it needs some serious polish. The swordplay can actually be kinda dope with all the parries, flashy special moves, different swords and projectiles. It's satisfying slicing and dicing bad guys up into sashimi, then gaining EXP and unlocking new moves. The bosses are generally pretty fun to fight, with the exception of that giant ass monk boss. 
he can fuck right off. Too often the game oscillates back and forth between decent and somewhat crappy in quality. You'll be having fun one minute, then quickly become frustrated from the slow, clumsy, awkward controls. Until you master its awkwardness, then you might have some fun again. But hey, at what cost, you know? The fighting can get difficult, particularly at the end of the game, where every move you do has to be calculated. I found Lin's playthrough easier, maybe because she has so many different ninja weapons and projectiles, but maybe also because I already beat Kotaro's playthrough and had to get good in the process. The graphics and overall presentation are nice. There's a unique feudal Japan atmosphere accompanied by a great, upbeat, funky soundtrack which is engaging and pushes you through some of the gameplay repetition and awkward controls. The story is decent enough and keeps you interested to see what happens next, although it does suck there's no voice acting. That would have really helped. Even if it was bad, it still would have added charm and personality in my opinion. There's two sides to the story, beat both characters playthroughs for the true final boss and ending, much like Resident Evil 2 with Leon and Claire. The game length is short, like 4-5 to five hours total with both characters stories combined, which can suck if you spent a lot of money on it, but as a rental back in the day or as just downloading an emulated copy nowadays, it's totally fine and doesn't overstay its welcome. It was actually just enough for me otherwise I'd get too sick of it. I guess because of its short length, you can easily jump back later on and do another quick playthrough for some decent samurai action, adding replayability that way. Granted you even like the game to begin with. On eBay it's going for around $60 or so, so it's not terrible considering how expensive some PS1 games can get, but that's still not worth it for me to collect, at least based on the quality of the game. If you're a collector or have some nostalgia for it, I guess it's not too bad. Otherwise anyone else with some passing interest, just download a ROM of it and call it a day. I guess Soul of the Samurai is a unique and original game in the sense that I can't think of any other samurai action adventure games on PS1, so I do have to give it that, especially if it influenced Animusha on PS2. Yeah, there is Tenchu, but that's specifically a ninja game, otherwise the other samurai games of the era were mostly fighting games like Bushido Blade and Samurai Showdown, at least that I know of. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. It wasn't until PS2 did we get more samurai action games like Animusha, Way of the Samurai, Blood Will Tell, and others. It's really cool to see the evolution of feudal Japan and samurai games over the years, even up until now. The genre has gotten serious traction lately thanks to the awesome Ghost of Tsushima, which if you haven't played yet and you're craving some samurai goodness, I don't know what you're doing here. Go play that game. Now. So yeah, you definitely have some better samurai game options compared to Soul of the Samurai, but if you're craving something retro and don't mind some good old fashion jankiness, then give this game a shot. You might have some fun. I probably would have enjoyed this game a lot more if I played it back in the day. As a kid, you don't always have the keenest sense of quality. If a game has something cool about it, it'll grab your attention and that'll be good enough. You'd probably be able to overlook some of the glaring faults. I wish I played it back 20 plus years ago. I would have appreciated a lot more, and it would have been the perfect companion to my obsession with Tenchu, the samurai and ninja game duo respectively. Oh well, such is life. It's still cool to finally be able to play it. My samurai ninja spirit can rest easy now. <laughs> There's definitely a soul of an honorable samurai buried here in this game. You'll just have to dig through a little bit of smelly samurai doo-doo to get to it. Giant Monk Boss Many a times kicked my ass Fuck Forever disgraced To restore honor only but one way So guys, thanks for joining me on another episode. This time I took a look at Soul of the Samurai and the PS1. Pretty decent game, it's not bad. I had some fun with it, you know. It's definitely a lot of jank though, so it's it's not an amazing game. But you know, check it out, emulate it, whatever. If you like Feudal Japan Samurai stuff, you can have some fun. Let me know what you think of Soul of the Samurai in the comments down below. Also, just whatever maybe your favorite 
feudal Japan or samurai game altogether is. You know, got so many cool options. Ghost of Tsushima, Animusha, uh, Way of the Samurai, all types of stuff. You guys let me know what your favorite is. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell if you haven't yet. That way you won't miss any cool episodes like this. You know, if you enjoy this stuff, subscribe. Why not? So I'm going to be live streaming Soul of the Samurai here on the main channel Saturday, September 17th, around like 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So hope to see you guys there. We'll have some fun, you know, hacking and slashing, talking some smack with the, about the game and everything. You know, it's, it'll be a good time. So hope to see you guys there. Besides that, I do have a dedicated live stream channel called Great Men Streams. I'll put a link in the pinned comment and the description down below. Be sure to subscribe there if you like live streams, you know, or follow on Twitch if you prefer that. I'll put a link down below for that as well. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I'm all soul the samurai out here. I gotta go load up on some sake or something. But thanks for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope to see you on that live stream. And uh, until the next time, see you later. All right, where's that sake? Was it an influence? Let's find out. Also, no, 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 no. Come on, no, 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 no. So was this a precursor, a predecessor, a spiritual? Ah, fuck. I'm Ren, and today I'm talking about a fucking with a fucking gut. So was this a spiritual success? Successor, predecessor. A game that highly resembles the Animusha games from the PS2 era. PS2 era. <laughs> what? I'm Ren, and today I'm talking about a PS1 fuck. And until next time, guys, sayonara! <coughs> oh, that last bit. Ah, something made me choke. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. Dude, I am fucking... I am samurai out, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> Ow, I actually stabbed myself. <laughs> Uh, well, that could be an outtake.